Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome to the Ectaris uh, 20.1 launch. My name is Martin Kratke. I'm the CEO of um, Ectaris. And I would like to uh, also introduce um, the mastermind behind the product who's on the call with us today as well. He's, um, He's the CTO of Ectaris and um, will introduce a few of the new things that we have and is also available for, for questions. Just uh, a little bit of introduction, I guess most of you know us already, so not too much detail here. We have two arms, the managerial the consulting arm and the carries the product arm. Uh, we have offices across the globe, headquarter in Australia, but the offices in, um, in Europe and in US as well. I would like to start this uh, event with a quick recap on, on the last six months uh, in between our last uh, major project launch. It has been a, a tremendous uh, time for us. We grew our customer base by 400% uh, all over the world. So uh, just to give you a bit of a perspective, we only have 20% of our revenues these days in Australia and 80% uh, is now around the world on every continent in uh, nearly all. And it's not just customers, it's also the, the interest uh, from the market. We just had a, a record uh, month in May where we exceeded again a metric uh, of uh, the last two years in regards to trial users um, starting with with our product. Um, so yeah, mass massive interest there in a, in a fairly challenging environment, but, but it looked like that particularly in this challenging environment, uh, customers are interested in transparency of what's going on, uh, making their processes more efficient and gaining better insights. Also, uh, again, further growth on the uh, marketplaces where we listed in, uh, we continue to have five star only reviews uh, on the marketplaces where we are listed. Uh, we're getting very good results in generic uh, platforms, software testing platforms like G2, where we have at the moment a result of four and a half stars out of five. We also get in traction now and featured on major publications. We were featured on Yahoo Finance. And finally, also uh, in the in the industry, so we we were voted among the top four providers of FP&A solution by the biggest association for finance professionals in the U.S., uh, beating some multi-billion-dollar competitors of ours and have, have been around for, for twenty years. Um, what we are addressing, I guess most of you again know, so I will keep this short, what are the typical pain points, um, solutions that are hard to maintain, typically the old spreadsheet ways, missing functionality, uh, you know, no way of doing the top-down changes, missing uh, financial logic, no real-time simulation, multi-user right that can be difficult. Silo solutions are typically companies approaching the FBNA space uh, with a variety of different solutions, one for data warehousing, one for reporting, another one for planning, another one for consolidation. And then uh, finally, the, uh, the source integration, which um, is still a very cumbersome and, and cost-intensive process. And this is exactly what we're addressing, so enabling uh, customers to get started um, in just a few minutes, a uh, completely cloud-based solution, uh, integrating their source systems in the quickest possible ways in many, uh, many ways, just really with a single click of a button. Uh, the only end-to-end -end solution for Power BI and Excel, uh, where you cover the data model automation down to the final reports, and again, with some of our apps uh, pretty much out of the box. A new thing that we will hear more uh, today in the session is integration of any platform, not just from a read perspective, which we've done so far, but also from a write back perspective. So probably one of the most exciting announcements that we'll be making is our new virtual data warehousing offering that will um, allow you to write back and plan with nearly any source directly into this source. And then finally, what we've been doing already, but there's way more coming, and you will in particular see some very uh, cool new stuff around smart planning from driver-based, machine learning-based, uh, the good old three-way forecasting logic for the finance professionals, but then also ensuring that insight ends up into action, uh, which was a particular uh, focus of this release 20.1 to make sure that uh, when people are you know, identifying interesting things that the action is also taken. 
Um, for most of you, again, familiar, but just as a quick recap, uh, what are the areas that we're addressing with Zakaris? Data model automation, automated connectors that allow you to create the optimal data warehouse for analytics and planning, really in many cases with a click. The new virtual data warehousing off offering that allows you to, to do this on nearly any source, as opposed to the connectors that are typically on a particular source. Uh, the modeling and planning side of things, where we have now an extremely powerful engine that was again further improved for 20.1 uh, for large-scale multi-user write-back simulation, financial logic, and everything governed by proper uh, audit trail and governance processes. And then obviously the integration with the, with the front-end tools. So this was it uh, just to recap, and now we're getting into the interesting stuff, what is new. And before I start with the details, I would like to quickly hand over to Hazan just to outline a little bit um, our overall strategy and uh, to reveal some of the things we've worked on. Hazan? Um, hi, everyone. So I think uh, Martin briefly introduced me. Um, just getting to the point, um, um, this is what uh, we've been working on mainly in the past year, and it's going to continue for the next year. So I'm uh, just going to give you a, uh, a glance of what, what we're going to do. So uh, one of the major improvements that we're going to have is going to be on intelligent modeling or the user interface, basically things like uh, Cube Wizard, where you actually do uh, your modeling assisted with a wizard or with type of intelligent notifications. Uh, so this basically makes your life a lot easier when you're starting from a model that you have on Excel and you want to translate it into an OLAP, a write-back a write uh, enabled um, model, or you want to do it just for analysis purposes. So um, the, the aim is to get to the intuitive user interface that Excel, not, not exactly like Excel, but uh, in terms of intuitive interface to get to the point where people can uh, intuitively use this, uh, this tool. So uh, we worked on something called a cube wizard where um, you can use your Excel tables. You can use um, even um, other databases that you have. But I mean, this is more about Excel where you have, for example, a table sitting um, on a workbook. It's called product. And then you have another table called um, customers. And you have a bunch of sales transactions on the third. Uh, tab. So the cube wizard basically helps you to identify what uh, you want to uh, incorporate in the Actarius model from these workbooks. And with a few clicks, uh, you get to um, a um, basically an Actarius model, which is uh, suitable for write back and also use in Power BI. So these um, workbooks become real dimensions and cubes or fact tables basically, uh, which you can easily connect to the Power BI. The good thing is those um, sheets won't sit, will, won't be sitting on, a, on an Excel book, uh, workbook. You will have them um, in a properly produced data warehouse. Uh, as a user, you don't know what, ha what is happening in the back end, but when you start using Power BI or Tableau or other reporting tools and you connect it to Actarius, then everything clicks and you don't need to do anything. Uh, so this is, this is the first part, Cube Wizard and Intelligent Modeling. Then we are introducing um, um, insights and intelligent planning engine, which is basically um, an AI based um, engine helping you uh, to do um, your planning better. It gives you two things. It first gives you insights about uh, your current data. Uh, it gives you also recommendations about what um, you can plan for next year. Um, also, it incorporates your feedback um, for uh, a type of intelligent planning. For example, if you know um, certain products uh, are likely going to be better performing next year, this basically gets that off you, that knowledge off you. So it's a kind of an ex expert system, creates a knowledge base based on your knowledge. 
So this is the key differentiator between us and the competitors where you, the competitors would have a, uh, an AI engine or an, I, an AI algorithm that comes up with a bunch of recommendations and that's it. There is no um, uh, basically feedback from you. Um, the knowledge of, uh, or the expert knowledge is not incorporated, but this is a basically different approach. It's a knowledge-based planning. And um, the third one is what uh, Martin already mentioned, the virtual data warehousing. Um, what we're trying to um, basically achieve is um, the old problem of, um, um, you know, solving the old problem of island solutions and uh, where, I mean, in, in a system, um, parts of the system comes from different data sources and basically no one has the ownership of any of those at the end. Uh, the solution you're trying to introduce becomes a, uh, a problem by itself. So what, what we're trying to, uh, here is uh, to give the business users uh, the ability to basically bring all these uh, data sources in one place. And for this, you don't need any IT expertise. You don't need your IT departments to be involved. Um, again, with a few clicks, uh, which Martin will show uh, very shortly, you basically um, say, okay, I want um, this dimension or uh, this table to come from an Excel workbook. This one I want to come. To, uh, I want it to become uh, uh, to come from. Um, another Azure database or from an analysis services model from MongoDB, Oracle, doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, the model is one model. Uh, you can uh, basically um, read from the single model, no matter how many different data sources this model is uh, uh, consists of, and uh, also plan by them. So uh, you could have a product dimension that really comes from Oracle, but you can plan by those products. So this is, this is an overview of what we're going to do uh, in, and what we've achieved and what we're going to improve in the next year or so. The um, AI-based planning, uh, insights, virtual data warehousing, and intelligent um, data modeling. Martin, back to you. Uh, in that case, the users can point to um, the sources and there will be way more coming. So this is just an initial start. Um, this is not just limited to other databases, but this will also support uh, SSS solution, like for example, Salesforce and others. So you point to this source, create a new uh, data source, and then have this data source available for your modeling. So in addition to the um, existing Acaris option, you have the option then to uh, define link dimension and link data sets where you point to this particular source that you've created, you select the table that you want to use, then you get the table and then you only specify for this table uh, what uh, is this particular column, is this a dimension, is this an attribute of a dimension and, and a few other criteria like IDs and so on. And then you have the option to either have a life link, so there's no physical move of the data, but you link to this data source, or you can uh, physically uh, synchronize it automatically with the Acaris database. You just specify the interval, for example, every hour, and then it will automatically synchronize your Salesforce contacts with the Acaris database. So really a groundbreaking new way of doing these things. This is not yet available um, in, in production that will be coming uh, very likely um, within this month. So, uh, likely the biggest uh, new thing that's coming in a car is really unparalleled at the moment. Um, we've already covered the cube wizard a little bit. What's new here is that you can now, you know, as previously it used to be a modeling environment where you quickly could create a completely new cube or update your cube you now have the option as well to just um, create your dimensions from a file. And we already had the profiles for the flat file sources. We now also have the profi profile for SQL sources. So you, you can uh, specify your profile once, you know, what's the dimension, what's the attribute and so on that you have in your 
in your source and it will remember this and then you can just sign on, click on the profile and update the data. The other new thing on the server modeler side is now a new interface to manage your user rights. Let me just quickly switch to um, another one. Uh, so you can manage now your user rights directly uh, in the UI. This was previously possible via tables. Now you can do this directly in the UI. You have a wizard here where the end user without any knowledge can maintain the user rights. So they can choose uh, for what they want to create the, um, the user rights for and then just specify what's the model, what access rights do the users have and what users do I want to apply these access rights to. So it makes the user management uh, much easier. Much easier. A, a big sh shout out here to uh, Khaled. Um, his company uh, is a very loyal cost customer of ours and they have sponsored this feature. So this was a requirement that they had in their environment and they have very generously agreed to sponsor uh, this feature. So this means we're sharing the cost of the development and obviously gets prioritized. And um, this is also a shout out to all the other customers out there. This is something that we can offer. So if there's really a feature that you're missing, please contact us and um, we can then likely prioritize this particular feature and develop it much quicker if there's some support uh, from the customer base. Talking about Khaled, um, I think he's still on the call. Um, Khaled, are you ready to just uh, share a few words as we are now presenting what was enabled by you, uh, maybe a little bit from a customer perspective? Sure, uh, what do you call? My name is Khaled Choudhury, so I'm the Director of Analytics and BI. So I actually come from, so I, I'm still part of FPNA, but I don't really do much of the planning to say a little bit. I kind of somehow have taken this uh, fun experiment of trying to change the corporate culture around analytics and kind of do a Power BI deployment globally. Um, so I used to run FPNA for KMG Chemicals. That's how we kind of got to know uh, Martin and Hazam when they came out for the Embass, right? And I was curious about what they were doing looked interesting, we did some pilots, and then best is history, right? So this is not the only feature I sponsored. <laughs> so uh, I can be a very demanding customer. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, and to actors' credit, right? So we have identified things that would be valuable to myself and other people, and we, they were able to de deliver pretty quick and fast about the, what we needed to be successful in that area, right? So long story short, from the initial perspective, I had the same pain as everyone else of uh, complicated systems. And then we had BPC and I will make this publicly known, right? I do not like BPC at all. Uh, I did have some sympathy for Hyperion, but after, uh, because I did never used it. And now after using it for a year with the new acquisition uh, and uh, going nowhere, uh, I don't really know why we waste money with it, but separate story. Um, for us, it was that we had the flexibility that we had in Excel from a perspective. However, it had the robustness of any large systems in terms of agility, but at the same time, administration logs and capabilities wise, right? So my first implementation was kind of like a flash forecast model. Then I kind of used it for budget and a little bit uh, getting the rolling forecast before I change roles. Uh, recently, more what do you call, I actually use more of the warehousing feature to a certain extent. I'm actually using the dimensions to almost do a master area management from one side. So that's kind of a little bit about me and what do you call, uh, what I've been kind of working with. Actarius, any other specific questions, Martin, that you want me to focus on? And maybe just a little bit, you know, from your experience of prior to Actarius and, and, and after Actarius, how have processes changed? What results have you seen? Uh, I guess also from a, from a user perspective, how are the users uh, accepting it? What has worked uh, with these users? What maybe wasn't so successful? Uh, what do you call... So for so like for example, right, the idea that 
we can work from the Excel front end and Power BI front end both works really well from my perspective because I have some super users that I will use to open up the Excel front end because to understand and utilize Excel front end is uh, needs requires a little bit more knowledge and finesse because you can do some heavy damage in Excel that you cannot do from the Power BI because it's a lot more controlled environment. But for the rest of the people, it ha the best part of it is because how well it blends with Power BI, the modeling perspective, that um, the users don't see a difference, right? They're there to do something and they're like, hey, this doesn't look right. They'll go ahead and write out to make the different changes and the thing flows. In terms of maintenance as well, because thanks to Power BI's composite model and things like that, we kind of use some of the what do you call more? What do you call higher uh, tables that comes outside of Actaria? What do you call the Actaria's database and whatnot? So it kind of syncs automatically, rolls the quarter, like the months, quarters automatically, and all that stuff with offsets and things like that. So the key factor for my users acceptance has always been simplicity, right? Uh, super users love all the features, but at the end of the day, the front end, what do you call front end users, they like the simplicity and what do you call um, ease of use, let's put it that way. So I mean like the real time changes, they don't have to click on save and stuff like that. So those kind of work out really well from my side. Now, thank you very much, uh, Colette, for, for taking part in this session today and then uh, for all your support over the years for the Actaris product as well. You know, we're very grateful for all the help that you've provided over the years. I think uh, the work you guys have done has been the reason we have helped, right? So you guys have done an amazing job and this is obviously, uh, what do you call it? Game changing for a lot of people, I think. As people adopt more Power BI, I think this is only going to go faster, so... Great work so far. Perfect. No, thank you very much, Khaled. So we we covered a little bit the changes in the server and in the model. I would like to move on now to AI and apps. Uh, some of it um, Hazam has already covered. Maybe again, before I go into details, because he is much more qualified here. Hazam, do you want to have a few words about the new advanced planning algorithms that um, are available now in um, Actaris? Yeah, sure. Um, I think I touched on this a little bit. Um, um, so you get basically the vanilla type algorithms like ARIMA and um, um, regression analysis. I'm not. A f uh, I'm not very fond of those uh, algorithms. Um, the reason is they don't capture the reality. They don't detect the reality. I give you an example. Uh, for example, Arima. Basically, what you probably know. Uh, I mean, this is the main algorithm behind the time series analysis, where basically based on some previous data the algorithm comes and says okay next uh, year probably works like this but the problem with uh, with the type of uh, this type of uh, algorithms is that for example um, this would work for businesses that are very very static so they have for example a marketing campaign in january and uh, they see the uptake in february um, I'm quite confident most uh, most businesses don't um, act like that. They're more reactive to the um, market. So, for example, if uh, last year you had a marketing campaign in January, uh, you could have it uh, in June this year. So, this type these types of algorithms wouldn't pick those up. But still, for for the uh, com uh, completeness sake, uh, we've uh, uh, included Arima as well, but uh, moving to the more interesting stuff, which is basically based on a knowledge base, as I mentioned, where um, you can use um, regression trees or um, any other algorithm for that matter. But this is what this engine now offers. It actually learned from you as a CFO, as a CEO, or as a financial controller, you know the business better than anyone else. Um, so, um, basically the system would, uh, incorporate your feedback 
regarding what uh, what is important in the business, what you know that is happening in the business, and then with the power of uh, calculations and analytics that uh, us human beings are actually missing, uh, these algorithms would combine your knowledge uh, with the computing power to uh, come up with a better plan for next year. As mentioned, if, if you already know that uh, there are contributing factors uh, in your business, for example, if, um, if basically um, marketing campaigns uh, would be um, contributing fact, a very big con contributing factor to your uh, revenue uptake, this uh, captures your knowledge and basically recommend scenarios based on that. Um, I think uh, we're going to have a demo very soon, um, not today, with, with the knowledge-based planning, uh, which basically covers this. So this is one part of it. Uh, the other part is, I think uh, Martin has another uh, slide on this, but I'll touch base on it because um, I think this is, this is the relevant uh, um, topic now. So besides these uh, AI, well, what we call machine learning based uh, algorithms, we have optimization algorithms as well. So for uh, constraint based planning, uh, for supply and demand optimization, where you have constraints and you basically want to optimize a cost function or you want to uh, ma maximize your revenue or change everything else around those constraints. For example, you have a constraint of maximum, maximum of um, 20 employees or 20 FD. Uh, at the moment you have 10. Uh, you basically define this for the system. You say I can go up to 20, but not more than 20. Or you could say, okay, I'm, uh, I'm a logistic company. Um, we have uh, countless ways of uh, distributing the product but there are constraints which are, for example, fuel consumption, which would be uh, total, total distance traveled, uh, number of em a number of um, employees involved or truck drivers involved. Um, there, is a, there are maximum and minimums that you want to adhere by. And <clears throat> this will basically optimize everything else uh, and give you uh, a scenario or scenarios it's not only one option that it will give you. Uh, it will give you either one or many options for you to choose from. But the important thing is with these uh, options, um, your constraints have been met. So uh, this will help you with um, basically demand planning and uh, optimization scenarios. Um, and uh, regarding apps, so this was about our, we call the whole thing AI engine. AI is a very wide uh, and broad term. Um, for us, it basically breaks down to insights, machine learning, assisted uh, planning, and optimization or constraint-based planning, these three. Um, now with the apps, um, I think, um, you can see the uh, screenshot on the right hand side where this is a power app uh, application available to everyone from Microsoft. But uh, again, the architecture of Actarius allows you to easily use power apps on the back end. Um, just giving you an idea that uh, um, might help you in future. Actarius is uh, kind of technology agnostic. So uh, we're not uh, fixated on Power BI. We like Power BI because basically Power BI, in our uh, um, experience, uh, so far has been the market leading um, reporting and analytics tool. But if you like, for example, Tableau or, um, I don't know, MicroStrategy, anything else, there still works. The good thing here is that you can actually incorporate apps like, for example, this pair app to add um, for this, this exact uh, thing that you're seeing. Uh, this actually is like a task manager or uh, project management tool. So you can add uh, tasks, employees, uh, add uh, employees to tasks and so on and so forth. But the good thing about it is that you can develop such a thing 
um, in in matter of hours, not days or weeks. And uh, this these are technology stacks coming from a provider like Microsoft, proven technology, and Actaris just um, provides the missing links here. So this was a very brief uh, introduction into um, apps and uh, AI engine. As you can see, for example, here, Martin is adding a task. Um, again, um, reduces the development time from weeks or months to hours. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm available for any questions, if, if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll end it back to Martin. So because we saw this is such a good idea, we need to make this part of the product and, and enable task management directly uh, in a carries that integrates with um, the Microsoft Planner. So you can manage your task directly in, um, in, uh, in Power BI, but you still, this will not, it's not just a, a, you know, an island disparate solution, but you can directly, it's directly integrated with the standard planner uh, that Microsoft provides. So it will be in the face of the users because it's part of Office and whatever you do here directly in Power BI will reflect through uh, in your operational uh, product, in, in your product, Office productivity solutions. So these were uh, the apps. Let's move on now to the visuals. This is again a, a key focus of our investment into R&D. So we have made uh, quite significant changes to our most widely used visual, the matrix visuals. Visual, we've added um, a new option to have comment markers. We have custom aggregations now where you can uh, use custom aggregations as, as opposed to or in addition to the existing uh, normal sum. We're now supporting conditional formatting. Uh, the user can now navigate via keys in the matrix and we have the new R prefix. And maybe I'll show a little bit how this looks like um, in real life. If we go now to a report that contains the matrix, so we have here a typical operational planning form. And you can see now the Actaris matrix with the, you know, had always the functionality to draw down on rows and columns, something that even the Power BI matrix at the moment doesn't offer. So there's no drill down into rows, sorry, into columns or not a navigation into columns that you have in Power BI. Here we have it. So the users can enter data on any level. This could be the total year. This could be you know, just a particular month. And the new thing is now that we have now the comment marker. So if I click on a cell, I can now see uh, this is a little yellow triangle here, and you can configure this in the in, in Power BI to whatever way you need it. And then you will see the comment, but you can also, with all the functionality that Actaris comments always had, uh, edit the comments and, and do your rich text uh, and, and format this comment in, in whatever way necessary. So one of the new things now, as you can see, is the is conditional formatting. So you can um, apply now conditional formatting directly um, on the on the matrix in an extremely flexible way in some ways better than, than what again the um, standard power bi matrix offers and then you have new features for example here if you know your discounts uh, will be uh, 1000 for the rest of the year you can now use this r prefix and it will automatically write forward this particular entry to the rest of the year so it makes planning much easier because you just put in whatever the assumption is and it will write it forward. We're also making it easier for the user now so they have now a shortcut here so in case they forget what these uh, shortcuts are. So relative increase with I and D for decrease and C for repeat. So if you want to write the same value on a branch, you can just use C1000. We are now explaining all these things directly on the visual, so making it easy for the users. Uh, so the other major change here is the option to use your custom aggregation. So in case, for example, if you're working with a price here, you can specify that for this particular column, you don't want to use the sum. You want to use the, uh, the average. And you can do this directly on the visual. So you can uh, go to your uh, 
to the particular value at the moment we only have one the amount but if you have multiple ones that support it as well and then and just choose what you want to show here for example the average likely doesn't it makes a lot of sense in a in a, in a in a in a price context but you can also switch between different ones here to change the way automatrix aggregates so this was a little bit about the matrix yeah sorry what i forget before is the the key navigation so you can now directly navigate uh with the arrow keys which was a big thing that our customers were asking for which shows again i guess we really listen to our customers and some of you can uh, attest to this we had situations now we have a, a big new customer in new zealand a, a listed company in new zealand and they had a few requirements for their global planning and in many cases we delivered in a in a in a day so they said hey we want for example this this key navigation or they had a few other requirements as well and we deliver these changes to them uh, within a day so this was matrix the next one is table edit there are a few changes here again uh, generously some of them sponsored by um, Cabot and uh, Khaled so now the option to do uh, bulk editing. So as if you want to edit multiple um, table items in one go, you have now the option with batch updates. So you can select your column, for example, the order, and you want to write a particular value on all filtered items. So if you want to, for example, say all orders that are now 4,000, I want to change them to 5,000. You can do this with a click of a button here and apply these batch updates. The other great thing uh, that, uh, again, was a, uh, an idea that Khaled had is the, the dynamic link of columns. So previously, we, when users were using the, our linked column feature, it wrote the value physically uh, into, the, into the receiving table. So for example, you know, if they choose balances, then this was written um, as a static value into the table. What we have now is a dynamic link. So the, the table that drives or contains these options here, if I change balances to balances one, then it would automatically replace everything here to balance one, which is a key requirement uh, in master data management, which is a, a very important function that we cover uh, for Cabot and, uh, and, and Colette's team. So these are the, this, these are the changes in uh, table edit. The next one is a completely new one, uh, the variance and variance light. Also a very uh, interesting new visual that allows you to visualize variances. Um, the light version is free of charge, available in app source. The full version uh, is part of a carry, so it will require a carry subscription. What it does is it allows you to visualize using small multiples principles, um, whatever items on the axis uh, you want to choose. This works either uh, vertical or horizontally. And it will show you your, uh, the current value against the target. So I can immediately see here uh, we are below our target. We are um, half a million below our target. I can either show this as a as an absolute amount, or I can switch to a relative display, which now shows me we are 22% behind our target. The cool thing is this also supports uh, custom tooltips. So if I move the mouse pointer to the particular uh, detail, I can immediately see what's driving uh, the variances in this particular scenario. If you move the mouse pointer to one of these bars, you can immediately then see what are the drivers. So we see the key driver, uh, is here trade sales. This was above budget. So we had uh, $306,000 budget, but we were 1.57 millions above it. But then we had a lot of red stuff here as well. So we can see all the other ones, unfortunately, were behind budget. And I can see this now at a glance, just moving the mouse pointer there. And also it shows me the developments over time. So uh, a great way to at a glance visualize how your company is doing. You have a comparison between you know, the entire, um, in this case, subseries, but obviously this could be anything. So anything that you want to use as your small multiples indicator. Uh, and then the, the option to link to the underlying details. The thing that we've added in the premium version is that you can also now do your planning here. So if you see this is way behind budget, you have now the option to plan here as well. 
And now you can directly do your planning here uh, for, this, for this data. So you can see I can put new targets in here just by clicking and then I can also drag and drop them depending on how far I want to do them. So an extremely easy new way of planning in context and then also immediately seeing what are the implications of this. Uh, if you are in uh, the reading mode, you will immediately see what are the implications. So at the moment we, are, we have a total of 3.8 million compared to our target of 7 million with 45% below. So you always have the insight, how are you doing? This is similar to the visual planning visual that maybe uh, many of you already know. This is nothing new. This was already there, where you have the option to do your, your planning in a, in a visual way, always with the visibility, what are the implications of your changes? So we see now 2.7, 3.1. If I'm happy with this scenario, I can immediately save it back. So we were at initially 0.91 million gross margin, 42%. Uh, gross margin percentage. If I refresh this now, I can, based on these planning steps that I've taken, I can then immediately see ah, if, if we're going with these uh, planning assumptions that I've just made, this will dramatically uh, go down. So this was a little bit about the new uh, variance visual. And finally, um, save the best for last, a completely new one that likely not many uh, have seen yet because it's not published in app source and apart from some uh, special customers like Khaled, no one has seen this so far. So this is a, a bit of a world first. So this is our new visual for project planning. And you, you probably know Gantt charts already. There's already Gantt charts available on the uh, Microsoft Marketplace, but there's no Gantt chart like this. Because what this Gantt chart is allowing you to do is directly doing your planning. So let's say, for example, you want to increase the progress of a particular task. You can just drag and drop here the, the marker. And when you press save, this will be saved. And this is not, not just for um, the existing tasks. You can also create completely new tasks. So I can click here, new task, add the new task, and then put in um, the, the details here for my new task. Uh, all aspects of the project can be covered here, like start times, uh, progress percentages, the uh, people that uh, are supposed to work on this. And this will be then immediately saved directly uh, on, the, on the project plan uh, here on this visual. So I can see now the, the new task. Again, I have the option to edit this here, change, you know, for example, the uh, percentage of completion parameters and, and every other detail. So as opposed to just visualizing the data, we can do this directly in, in Power BI, so all the planning aspects. And this is not just uh, you know, here in Power BI, but this is obviously then written back into the data model. So if I log on to the data model, I will immediately see these changes. I can immediately see um, the new items that uh, I haven't saved this yet, but if I save this, this should be now back in the model. Let's see if I haven't tested this before, so I hope this doesn't disappoint me. And here you go. The new task is here, directly coming from Power BI um, in, in the visual. So this is the, the last visual. Um, the next thing that I quickly would cover again, something completely new. We now have a new Power BI connector. So as opposed to connecting to the underlying data source, you have now the option to just go to the connectors uh, that Microsoft provides, search for uh, Actaris, and you see now you have the new uh, Actaris connector here that will connect to your um, specific uh, environment. And you can now directly add your models very easily without knowing anything about relational databases or any other details. You can add them the cubes or the dimensions directly from here and have everything available. There is at the moment one drawback for um, planning purposes. At the moment, this is not too useful as it only supports import mode. So this is typically uh, better for reporting requirements because connectors in general, this is not just us, but any connector at the moment for Power BI does not support direct query. So it's a great way to connect 
for reading purposes, if you want to build your reports, particularly for our connector users that are using uh, you know, Zero, QuickBooks, Dia, HubSpot, and, and so on, they can very easily now um, add their models directly uh, to Power BI from scratch unless they're using the, uh, the apps. So this is a little bit uh, of an overview of the new connector. Uh, then talking about connectors and apps, um, we have in our existing uh, connector with Zero, which is at the moment the most widely used, we've added some very exciting new changes. We've added now cash flow forecasting directly um, in Zero in the template. We've added ID integration, which wasn't possible before. So as opposed to using the name of accounts or other items as the ID, we have now the ID from Zero. So if you, re if you rename your objects in Zero, this will automatically reflect and doesn't impact on Actaris. Uh, we have now contact for GL, contact for GL transactions, which also normally is not that easy in Zero, if impossible. But we have uh, a new way of adding the contact. For example, if you have revenue transactions in your journals, adding the respective contact to it that normally comes from invoice. So we do clever things with uh, views to join these uh, ones together. Then we have two completely new connectors for HubSpot, um, which is, I guess, one of the biggest, if not the biggest marketing automation system out there. So extremely easy way now to create a, uh, a data warehouse with your HubSpot data. You just um, log on to your HubSpot account, put in your, your username, and this will then automatically generate the, uh, the data warehouse for all your HubSpot data. And the same for DIA inventory. Uh, DIA inventory is an inventory solution, very popular at the moment in the zero space, but not just there. It's really enterprise-grade capabilities here in DIA uh, that you have access to with this new DIA connector. Um, the, as a bit of an announcement, what we at the moment working on is MYOB and Sage. So we will, uh, in the foreseeable future, also support these two systems directly uh, in in a carries as connectors. So we're getting uh, close to the finish. Um, this is a bit of a roadmap. Hazam has already uh, covered it uh, a little bit, so, but just that our customers are a little bit aware of what's coming. So we've already covered virtual data warehousing will be one of our key investments. Uh, and then a lot around planning smarts from frequent patterns, uh, planning automation, AI, addition of new advanced analytics forecast, uh, connectors to new ERP solutions and SSS solutions, uh, demand planning as templates, uh, constraint planning algorithms, and uh, what Hesamer has already alluded to, where he's one of uh, the, the most uh, respected experts in the world, is knowledge-based recommendations, as opposed to just having an AI algorithms, uh, you know, getting applied to your data. You can combine the AI plus the expert knowledge of the people that know your uh, know the particular subject matter. And so we're already applying these principles in big projects here in Australia. One of the largest uh, uh, liquor or bottle shops in Australia, bottle shop chains, uh, they are using things like that for their 500 bottle shops to optimize you know, what promotions work in what uh, shops. And so this is combining the knowledge you know, in this particular demographic and, you know, whatever other attributes to have in this uh, period, in this holiday, and so on. Combining this knowledge with uh, AI-based machine learning methods. So this concludes the presentation uh, for today. I would like to open the floor now for any questions that you might have. The warehousing, does, is that part of the planning uh, model or do I need to buy a separate, uh, what do you call? A subscription for that or how does that work so it will require um, special tenants so it's not based anymore on the uh, on the Azure SQL tenant that we provide with Ectaris uh, but it will require a special either managed instance or on-premise SQL server that we provide and that will have um, a different price tag to the to the to the current licensing uh, to be honest, we haven't even yet finalized uh, the, the pricing for this, but it will be very likely along the lines of premium tenant, which gives you much better capabilities. And so when you do it on the cloud, much better capabilities, um, 
in, in the cloud, so from a processing power perspective. And if you're using your own SQL Server or your own tenant, you will get a discount then there. So, uh, well, I don't know, let's say, as a rule of thumb, we haven't set the prices yet, but let's say this is 500 US dollars a month. And if you have your own SQL tenant or your own on-premise SQL Server where you do things that saves us money, then you will get a discount of X based on the virtual data warehousing uh, tenant. So you, you would need a SQL Server, not just a past database, right? That's correct, yeah. So this doesn't work anymore with Azure SQL databases. This will need a managed instance or uh, on-premise. Cool. Now, I would like to thank everyone for attending this initial session um, this afternoon. Uh, also, a particular uh, thanks to Khaled for attending and, and sharing his um, experiences. So again, thank you very much, everyone, for attending the 20.1 launch session. And we're looking forward to, to see you all at another event uh, coming soon.